Uh, welcome to AP World History. We're looking at Chapter 33, looking at the Middle East, Asia, uh, and Africa, and their fight for independence and uh, emerging in the 21st century. Um, <coughs> Post-independent nations, uh, this is after World War II, um, faced uh, huge populations, uh, a lack of resources, uh, no real infrastructure to speak of, with the exception probably of India. Um, not a lot of industry. Um, now that has changed in recent years because of outsourcing by westernized countries. And these countries uh, like India and uh, Vietnam and parts of uh, Africa and other places are uh, industrializing uh, because of infusion of capital. But the problem remains is that most people are poor. Uh, this pattern of poverty and uh, uh, large po dense population uh, is similar in certain uh, aspects of Latin America. Uh, there certainly has been a lot of hostilities between religious groups, uh, between the Hindus and uh, uh, the Muslims. Um, the Buddhists and uh, the Muslims, uh, and these uh, difficulties have drawn away from resources and uh, kept some of these uh, uh, nations from uh, prospering. Uh, because of civil wars with inside uh, these nations has also been a factor that's uh, slowed progress. Um, although they want to wanted to industrialize. Um, uh, it certainly has been a slow go for them. Uh, famines, uh, disease, um, uh, are certainly uh, barriers that are, are difficult for them to overcome. Uh, populations uh, have depended on outside help to survive. Uh, certainly in Africa, uh, the outbreak of AIDS and other uh, f uh, pestilence uh, killing uh, large numbers of people, um, cholera, some of the, the diseases that uh, have been eradicated or minimized in Western nations uh, take a huge toll in these countries. Uh, this map shows uh, the density of people living per kilometer, and you can see that uh, places like India and uh, some of the uh, countries uh, in Asia, particularly, a uh, high n a number of people per square mile, and it takes it's certainly takes a lot of resources to feed those people. And you can see from this picture the number of uh, slums that uh, have grown up in these huge cities. Um, and there's no doesn't seem to be any relief uh, in uh, in the future. Uh, one of the other things that uh, besides uh, uh, poor living conditions is certainly uh, huge families. Uh, in Africa especially, uh, tribes saw children as sort of a insurance policy. Uh, you find lots of countries with uh, populations uh, below uh, uh, adulthood, uh, a lot of children, a uh, high mortality rate among uh, children in Africa and parts of Asia. Uh, certainly uh, the cities and the, the, the squalor uh, have uh, uh, done a toll to the environment. Uh, er erosion of the soil, deforestation has certainly been a factor in these areas. Uh, this shows a picture of uh, Indira Gandhi. She became the uh, Prime Minister of India. Uh, certainly women in some areas have succeeded in uh, receiving the, the vote and being involved in politics, but historically these areas, and still to a certain extent, uh, discriminate against women, uh, particularly in the Middle East, in Africa, Asia. Uh, may, it's a male patriarchal society. Uh, women have, uh, always seem to play a, a secondary role. and. Uh, Part of that is religious, and just part of it is custom. Um, most of these countries rely solely on exports of raw goods, crops, um, 
Now this is changing for China and India because they are industrializing and they're building the things for the West. But uh, for the most of the Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, uh, uh, very poor countries. Uh, when we look to the Middle East, one of the things that has improved their economy is certainly Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, uh, Iran, uh, is the export of oil. Um, but still, the population, there's a huge number of people who are living uh, below the poverty line. And there are some definitely religious differences between the Israelis and the Muslims in the Middle East, and this has created some problems. In recent years, uh, radicalized uh, Muslims have been attacking Western culture. Uh, they see the Western uh, nations in the United States particularly as being Satans of the West, certainly some of the uh, people in the Muslim religions there. And they have become uh, America's uh, uh, enemy. We have fought a war in Iran and uh, or in Iraq and also in Afghanistan, can still fighting a war there uh, against the radicalized Muslims who see us as their enemies. Uh, a lot of these countries still depend on the UN and other nations to shore them up, uh, particularly in Africa, uh, where you just have constant civil war, famines, disease, uh, overpopulation, uh, there are a few countries in Africa that export oil, uh, but for the most part, uh, they are uh, tend to be underdeveloped. Uh, South Africa being the exception, uh, they are one of the more prosperous nations in Africa. Um, certainly, uh, in Ghana and other places. Uh, 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 the, some of these countries have uh, leaned towards socialism. America has tried to provide aid to some dictator groups to, or dictators in those areas to keep communists out. Um, of course, we fought a war in Vietnam for about 10 years, and that was to try to keep the communists out. And Vietnam is communist today in terms of a econ economic system. Uh, most of these countries also you could generalize and say that they are uh, many of them dictatorships. Uh, new West African nations, uh, these nations tend to be very unstable, the government, uh, very poor population, um, the very rich and the, re the rest are very poor. Uh, in a South Africa they practiced a uh, political system of apartheid where they segregated people, people of color um, were given fewer rights. Uh, uh, a white minority ruled South Africa. Eventually uh, they will turn over the reins to Mandela, uh, the African National Congress. Uh, de Klerk uh, uh, was instrumental. He was the, the, pre the Prime Minister of South Africa seeing the handwriting on the wall. Mandela spent uh, over 20 years in jail uh, for his political activism in South Africa. Uh, and eventually apartheid will end and Africa will, uh, South Africa will be ruled by uh, people of color, uh, the, uh, which was a, a huge step uh, in this area. Uh, this is a petition of uh, uh, the holding the British eventually will leave India after World War II. Uh, West Pakistan and uh, East Pakistan will emerge later. East Pakistan will become Bangladesh. Uh, these the two countries in the blue are primarily Muslim, uh, and India uh, is uh, Hindu. Uh, West Pakistan uh, is very and India are very hostile towards each other. Uh, they both claim an uh, area called Kashmir to the north, uh, and they both have nuclear weapons, um, which makes this region very unstable. Uh, Afghanistan, up, up in the upper left-hand corner, uh, we're fighting a war there. Many of the Taliban have fled to Pakistan and uh, carry out to raids into Afghanistan, this conflict is far from being over. I suspect when we leave Afghanistan it will revert back to the Taliban. 
Uh, India, certainly one of the biggest problems they have is their huge population uh, and uh, the resources to take care of over a billion people. Uh, and they're not practicing uh, the birth control measures that India or China is, uh, the one-child policy. Uh, of course, in India, the, the more children you have is uh, uh, seen as a plus. But the problem is it puts a huge burden on the ecosystem and the political system, um, the economic system. Um, so uh, they're... Uh, experiencing some huge problems but they are industrializing this shows the Middle East this is certainly a place where a lot of uh, political conflicts are occurring uh, and have occurred historically uh, even fr from the creation of Palestine uh, and it became Israel from in 1949 uh, there's been constant wars there uh, there was the Iraq-Iran war that lasted for about 10 years. Uh, we fought the Gulf, two Gulf wars there, uh, uh, trying to bring down uh, Saddam Hussein. Uh, Egypt has had an unsettled uh, relationship with Israel. Um, Nasser will become pr uh, premier or president of uh uh, e Egypt in 1952. Uh, he will eventually take over the Suez Canal. Uh, one of the groups that uh, that is a real force now in Egypt uh, is the Muslim Brotherhood, which seems to be anti-West. Uh, Nasser created, he socialized, brought some reforms about. Uh, he will oust the British and the French from the Suez Canal. This will cause a crisis. America will back uh, Egypt, and eventually Britain and France will have to give up control of the, the canal. Uh, eventually, he will launch an attack against Israel, the Six-Day War in 1967, which uh, he will lose. Anwar Sadat will succeed him. Uh, he will be assassinated. Uh, Nubarak uh, will be succeed him, and then he was uh, overthrown in 2011 uh, the Egyptian uh, revolution, the Arab Spring. Uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini uh, in Iran uh, after the Shah was ousted uh, uh, he will try to institute and has instituted a theocracy there uh, under Muslim control. Uh, Anti-West uh, the Shah, who was pro-West, uh, is going to be kicked out, and Khomeini and uh, his f faction will take over Iran. And then there will be the Iran-Iraq War, uh, and eventually uh, it will last about 10 years, and an armistice is signed in 1988, but certainly a place of where millions of people were killed. And we'll stop right there.